Welcome to the GPS Connect video series. This video will concentrate on using the GPS Connect tool within MapInfo Discover to capture point, line and polygon data. The GPS Connect tool provides a quick and simple way of connecting and creating data from a GPS within MapInfo Discover. This functionality is exclusive to the 64-bit version of MapInfo Discover. All functionality of the GPS Connect tool can be accessed from the GPS Ribbon tab. The previous video tutorial, Connecting Your GPS Receiver, covered all aspects of connecting your internal or external GPS receiver to the GPS Connect tool. If you are unsure or unable to connect your GPS receiver, please watch this video tutorial first before proceeding. Two methods exist to capture data either into a new table or into an existing table. If you want to capture data into a new table, you have no control over the structure or where the data is saved. This may be good for a quick data capture. If you capture data into an existing table, you can specify the fields of data capture and enter the data into the table as you collect the GPS data. Firstly, you need to be sure that your GPS receiver is set up and able to connect to your GPS Connect tool. Navigate to the Capture Setup button on the GPS Ribbon tab within MapInfo Discover. The Capture Setup button opens a dialog containing all the required tools to configure GPS data capture. Click on the Capture Setup button. The Capture Setup dialog has three tabs present. Table style and settings. The table tab enables the user to select a table to automatically insert the captured GPS data into. If a table is not defined when capturing data you'll be prompted to save the data into an open table or into a new table. If you define a table the data capture will be automatic and seamless to the user. Four different types of data can be captured in a table including point, point trace, polyline and region. Only the point and point trace enables you to define the table fields for individual values to populate. When you select a field in a table the appropriate value will automatically populate into the field when a point is captured. I will now open the Table Fields dialog and demonstrate selecting some fields. And what I'm doing here is matching longitude to longitude, latitude to latitude, etc. So when we capture GPS points here, it will put in the respective information into these fields. So if we get a bearing off the GPS point, the bearing value will go into this field. Click OK to accept the values. Although defining a table is not mandatory for point trace, polyline and region data types, if a table is not defined for a point data set you will not be able to capture this type of data from the GPS ribbon. I will now select the correct table for the point trace data capture type. Subsequently I will select the correct table fields to populate. If you do happen to select a same field as you have before you will get a warning prompt, something similar to this. And you'll also see an attention symbol here to alert you. OK, they're all populated. Let's move on to the Style tab. The Style tab enables the user to define the default style types to use when capturing data. All MapInfo Pro colours, styles and swatches are available. You may wish to change the live GPS symbol. This will make it easier to visualise the live GPS location on the Mapper window. 
So let's just do that now, down here. The settings tab contains options for capture type, capture interval, recenter and live GPS display. Under the capture type are two options, time and distance. This allows the user to specify how a point or a node will be captured. If time is selected, you can specify how frequently a point will be captured. The default is one second. If distance is selected, you can specify units of either feet or meter. The default capture interval is one meter or one foot. The time and distance unit values used will depend on many factors such as walking or driving speed. For example, if you are walking slow, you may want to increase the time of capture, otherwise you may end up with too many points or nodes captured. The GPS Connect tool has the ability to auto recenter the map based on the location of the active GPS position. That's this value here. You can select from the various recentering positions or turn off this feature. So you can have none, we'll turn it off. Always means that every single time the GPS location moves, the map will recenter. And these values here are just factors of the actual map window size. So we'll leave it on 80%. If you wish for the live GPS location to be turned off, simply select off here. To commit any modifications, click OK, which we will do now. Now to the business of collecting data. To begin your GPS data capture, you will need to connect to the GPS receiver to your computer or tablet. Once the GPS receiver is connected and live GPS location is presented in the GPS setup dialog. You are now ready to capture data. Is we'll go to the GPS setup dialog. Um, as we are located inside, we can't use a live GPS location, so we're going to use a file. Let's start that up. And as we can see here, there's a live GPS location as a yellow point which we selected before. Okay, I'll just stop that. For convenience, the GPS setup dialog can be minimised to expose more screen space. Do not attempt to close this dialog, otherwise it will close the active GPS receiver connection. You will normally receive a warning before this will occur. Data capture is grouped into two distinct modes, automatic and manual data capture. I'll just start the connection up so we can see the different data capture types. Automatic capture includes point trace, polyline and region object capture. Manual data capture includes point object capture, this one here. Automatic data capture allows the data, either nodes or points, to be automatically created based on either time or distance parameters previously defined in the Capture Setup dialog. We'll just have a look there. And that's those settings here. Manual Data Capture allows point data to be captured at the current GPS location at the discretion of the user. This is useful when collecting random points such as drill collars, signposts or points of interest, etc. I will now demonstrate the collection of point data. So what I'll do, I'll just stop that and restart so we'll go back to the original point. And let's minimise this dialogue. Point data requires the table to de be defined in the Capture Setup dialog. Please note this table will need to be reselected each time you start Map Info. To start collecting point samples, simply click the Point button, which I'll do right now, 
and you'll see a green point gets generated. Note that when you first click the point button, a point will be created at the current location. To continue to create points, click the point button when required. So I'll do it again. To add additional information to the point collected, you can either open the browser for the point table or use the data entry tools within MapInfo Discover. These are the data entry tools which you may wish to use. To finish capturing point data, click the stop button. The following object types are all automatically entered and stopped at the discretion of the user. These include point trace, polyline and region. I will now demonstrate the capture of polyline data to capture a path walked along. So I'll start the GPS and I'll click the polyline button. A line object will be captured by either distance or time, whatever you have specified on the settings tab on the capture setup dialog. For example, if you specified capture by time of one second, a node will be created every one second. If you specified a capture by distance 10 meters, a node will be created every 10 meters of moving away from the last captured node. A handy feature is the ability to pause the data capture. This is useful if you need to deviate temporarily off course or require a break. So let's pause. So at the moment no data is being captured. I'll click resume and the data will continue to be captured. To finish logging the polyline, click the stop button. So we'll do that now. If you have specified a table to capture the data into, a line feature will automatically save into that table. In this case we haven't, so I'll click new and I'll create a table. and click Save. And I'll just bring that table into the current display. I'll quickly now demonstrate the capturing of point and region data. So I'll restart the GPS setup. I'll just temporarily turn off that point and the polyline tables just to free up some space on screen. I'll restart the capture session and I'll click point trace. And as you will see here, every one second a point will be generated. I can pause that, so no data is getting captured, and now I will resume. And subsequently stop. Okay. Alright, we'll stop that capture session. I'll remove that point trace capture. And now let's have a look at capturing region data. For the example of capturing region data, I'll need to select another log file. I'll start the capture session up, and this is in another location. So what we want to do is map around the perimeter of this field here. Okay, 
So I'll stop and restart. So we start from the beginning. Click region. And thus we begin the capture of region data. As you can see, every one second a node will be created within that region object as previously specified. What is handy with this particular capture technique is that we can see the region object being created on the fly. Okay, we're nearly finished. And stop. So let's create a new table. And we'll just bring that into the display. And there we go. If you need to attribute this, once again, use the Map Info browser window, or you can use the Discover data entry tools here. Either this one. Or this tool here. Please note that when capturing GPS data, only one object type can be captured at a time. For example, you cannot capture a line feature, pause, then capture a point object, then resume the capture of the line object. Thank you for reviewing this video on how to capture GPS data.